Hey guys, Jordan with the Young Turks and TYT Politics. I am here uh, in a nice summery day in North Dakota. Uh, it's actually pretty nice out, pretty gorgeous. Let me give you a little, uh, little flip around here. So uh, we're right in front of Sacred Stone Camp, which is uh, one of the camps here. I'll zoom in there so you can see. Hold on. So there's the, uh, there's the teepees and the yurts down there. If you can see down there. And uh, right here where we are, veterans, uh, the veterans who are coming back, if you see that green tent right there, that's uh, one of the veterans' tents. If you see uh, behind, behind me right here, let me uh, try to zoom out a little bit. So there's some veterans uh, constructing. Uh, there's a lot of construction going on here. Uh, veterans making new structures in the anticipation of more veterans coming back. Uh, I was just here a week ago. I went back to New York. Now I'm back. And it looks uh, more built up than it was even a week ago. Um, you have, uh, at this point, between, I'd say, 100 and 200 uh, veterans have came back uh, to Sacred Stone Camp, uh, setting up camp here, as well as helping. You see, if you listen, you can hear the construction. They're, uh, they're uh, working on that wooded structure, wooden structure right there. Hold on. Uh, you can hear they're uh, coming back here to Sacred Stone. They're coming back uh, to help with the cleanup at the main Ocheti Sakoan camp. And uh, the spirits are very good. Uh, a lot of the veterans that I'm speaking with, let me uh, flip it around. A lot of the veterans that I'm speaking with uh, are basically here because they have seen the uh, moral and uh, real police brut brutality on the water protectors that has not stopped. Uh, it's only kept on going. And they are here to help out, not only with uh, cleaning up the camps, uh, but to stand with the water protectors and see this through, however it's gonna end. Um, if you haven't been paying attention, uh, on Thursday, the Cheyenne River uh, Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe, which is not the main Standing Rock Sioux Tribe, it's a different uh, tribe. They filed a lawsuit uh, in federal court in Washington, D.C. Uh, they filed a temporary restraining order on the Dakota Access Pipeline, uh, and they are being heard tomorrow uh, in Washington, D.C. at 2 o'clock Eastern Time. So the Cheyenne River Tribe filed that on Thursday. And then over the weekend, yesterday, uh, the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe joined that temporary restraining order. The Cheyenne River's uh, original temporary restraining order request, and yes, you guys should share this video, get it out there. The Cheyenne River's uh, original restraining order request uh, is citing uh, religious grounds, actually, which is an interesting argument uh, that hasn't really been made yet. Uh, obviously, the, uh, the, law, the lawsuits have focused on uh, sacred burial grounds, uh, environmental ramifications. Uh, Cheyenne River is look, looking at the religious uh, freedom that, they, that is being infringed upon them by this pipeline going through Lake Oahe, which uh, the Cheyenne River tribe uh, explains in the lawsuit is their sacred water where they uh, use for uh, sacred ceremonies and things like that. So by putting the pipeline under Lake Oahe, Cheyenne River is explaining in this lawsuit, you are impinging on our religious practices and freedom. So it's an interesting argument and might actually uh, nip conservatives in the ass because we know, you know, the Hobby Lobby lawsuit from years ago and uh, all these uh, companies and churches who have uh, filed suit famously the Hobby Lobby case that went to the Supreme Court, citing their religious rights and religious freedoms are being infringed upon. So that is uh, the lawsuit that's being heard tomorrow. Cheyenne River filed it, as well as Standing Rock Sioux Tribe, and it will be heard at 2 o'clock tomorrow if the lawsuit, uh, if the temporary restraining order is uh, provided. It is... Uh, the oil company, Energy Transfer Partners, and DAPL will have to stop drilling immediately. So uh, that's at 2 o'clock tomorrow. Uh, we will see what happens. Obviously, Standing Rock uh, uh, has been unsuccessful in all the lawsuits to date. Uh, they have filed for injunctions in the past, where, which judges have dismissed. 
uh, the only thing they had, they have been successful up until now, was uh, under the former president, Barack Obama, the Army Corps uh, denied the permit to drill under Lake Oahe uh, in early December of last year. Uh, suddenly, after just two months, suddenly the Army Corps uh, felt differently and uh, approved the permit. Obviously, it wasn't the Army Corps really approving it. It was President Trump holding a gun to their head. Um, so we will see what happens with that hearing tomorrow. If they are uh, denied the temporary restraining order, there are other things that the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe and Cheyenne River could file for. Uh, but I believe that uh, they are focusing on this lawsuit tomorrow and this hearing tomorrow uh, because, you know, I think with religious grounds, it is much harder for uh, the federal government or DAPL to claim, oh, well, you know, it's not impinging on their religious rights because religious rights, you know, who is DAPL to say what is or is not impinging on uh, Cheyenne River or Standing Rock Sioux's religious rights. So we'll see. Uh, Cheyenne River also filed a uh, motion for an um, injunction uh, into the pipeline. So they have not only a temporary restraining order, but an injunction in a separate motion. So we will see what happens there. When you get to Standing Rock, you really can't plan things. So, you know, you might think you're covering something one day, and then a whole series of stuff comes up uh, an hour later. But, um, you know, to me, being back here is important, uh, no matter how the story ends, because I think... Uh, there's not a lot of media left here. I think that uh, for the media that is here, it's our job really to just be present and show you uh, who is here, who's coming back, uh, why they're here, uh, what they have to say, um, and also show you what the police are doing and what the legal system is doing. Because if we don't show you, then it becomes normalized to brutalize unarmed people. And then it becomes normalized to uh, for public uh, officials like police officers uh, to be railroading, uh, railroading unarmed Native Americans uh, and, un and unarmed non-natives and basically throw false charges at them. Uh, that's, this is what they've been doing to black people in Baltimore forever and other uh, inner cities uh, where the legal system has railroaded them. Uh, but uh, like he said, uh, as a white person seeing it up close, how these people are treated is very jarring. It's very infuriating and it's very sad, um, but I'm, I'm glad I'm here. Um, it's hard to actually find a lot of people to talk to because they're so scattered all over the place uh, building. But um, as you look down there, uh, that's a good view. Uh, really, let me, let me flip it around. Really, really far across, uh, that's where the, the drill pad is and drilling is going on. Uh, drilling is going on as we currently speak. For the Dakota Access Pipeline, let me uh, keep it straight there. So uh, you see those towers across. Uh, that's that's the uh, west side of the. Excuse me, that's the east side of uh, of the uh, drill where they're drilling. Uh, Myron Dewey, who's a drone pilot, uh, had his drone shot at yesterday. You could see that on or two days ago. Uh, you could see that on digital smoke signals. His his Facebook channel. Uh, there's bullet holes in the drone. So uh, drone pilots are definitely having their drones attacked, and, and Myron and other drone pilots have been harassed here by police. So the DAPL forces are still very strong. Uh, when drones fly over the drill pad, they don't want drones showing uh, how far along they are and what they're doing. Uh, so interesting. But uh, what I also uh, am interested to see here is, you know, it's time for people to see if people put their money where their mouth is. You know, I think that a lot of people had to leave here, but, um, you know, the camp, the tribe, Standing Rock Sioux tribe has uh, told people they need to leave the main camp. Obviously, that's been a source of conflict because many people think this is not the time to leave. This is the time to get here and stand for the water and stand with uh, Native Americans. Uh, but since Trump has, uh, well, the Army Corps and Trump have approved the easement, uh, they have not changed their tune about you know, encouraging people to come back. They've continued to encourage people to uh, demonstrate and pray where they are. Uh, you saw demonstrations in D.C. You saw d demonstrations in New York, in Denver, in L.A., in other parts of California, in Iowa, in many, many states. There were uh, protests against the easement being granted. Uh, I think that resistance needs to stay at height. Don't just do it the day. Uh, the pipeline permit was approved. I also think that, uh, frankly, you know, I'm a journalist. I'm not going to tell you 
how to message your protest. But we also need to remind people, and I think that this is being lost because obviously the media does not cover this. President Trump is invested in this pipeline. Now, you know my coverage during the primary and during the campaign. I, didn't, I was no friend of uh, Hillary Clinton's. I, did, I covered her critically. However, if I'm keeping it real, if Hillary Clinton was president and she was invested in an oil pipeline that was just approved by her and she helped ram it through, we would be on the streets and there would be bows and arrows being thrown at the White House. So the fact is, this president is invested in this pipeline. He's got shares in Phillips 66, uh, which is that owns 25 percent of this pipeline. And as far as I know, he still has shares in Energy Transfer Partners, which is the main oil company that owns this pipeline. His people say he sold the shares. However, he hasn't shown his stock portfolio. He hasn't shown his taxes. So what are we supposed to take Donald Trump's word for it that he sold his shares? He also appointed as energy secretary, former Texas Governor Rick Perry, who literally was on the board of directors of Energy Transfer Partners. So they're not hiding their corruption. The president's invested in the pipeline. Rick Perry was on the board and made hundreds of thousands of dollars from the parent company. And the secretary of oil, I mean state, is the former CEO of ExxonMobil. I mean, you don't get more corrupt than that. That's not even corrupt. That's just straight up. Um, yeah, that, that's just straight up corruption. There's no other way of phrasing it. So I think uh, when people protest, of course, you got to focus on the water, uh, native culture, native land. But uh, I mean, the bottom line is, unfortunately, in America, the corporate media will only cover something if it involves Donald Trump and possibly a scandal. Well, Donald Trump is invested in the pipeline. He rammed it through. There's ethical uh, laws that I don't think that's copacetic with. So it, I, I believe that uh, we cannot forget if you're protesting, if you're writing things on social media, Google it. Look it up. This man is personally invested in the pipeline. A pipeline, by the way, as I've reported, that does nothing for America. This is for foreign exports. And we need to keep reminding people of that because the bottom line is we cannot live in a post-factual America. Uh, Trump would like that. You know, how his, uh, his aide, Kellyanne Conway, said there are, oh, there are alternative facts. There aren't alternative facts. There just are facts. Just like I say, there aren't two sides to every story. That's why it's bullshit that corporate media just says, well, I have this side represented it and we have this side represented it, so we're balanced. No. One side is right and one side is wrong in most cases. Sorry to say, the journalism teachers don't teach you that because they're full of shit too. One side is right. There's one set of facts. There's not, two, there's not two sides to every story and there's not two set of facts. Donald Trump is invested in the pipeline, period. When, when, when his spokesperson was asked about his shares in Phillips 66, she would not own. She would not respond. By the way, it's not just Donald Trump. The patron saint of liberalism, Warren Buffett, which corporate media loves to give, uh, you know, blowjobs to, in my opinion, uh, and makes him out to be this saint because he gives a lot of money to charity. God bless you, Warren. Warren Buffett is the largest shareholder in Phillips 66 which owns 25%. So it's not just Donald Trump. It's people that proclaim to be, you know, economically progressive who are fine, uh, taint, you know, poisoning the water for 18 million people are fine with sacred burial grounds being dug up if it makes them money. And that's Warren Buffett, who, by the way, former President Obama brought out uh, on his reelection campaign.